Um, welcome, Opalang, to this podcast, the iMarket podcast. So good to have you today. Um, you're joining in all the way from Spain, um, and we're really happy to have you to have this conversation around what is the role of the CMO versus the CTO in leveraging digital technology. And to get started, I'll go right to, to the point. Um, we, there's a lot we want to hear from you as a thought leader um, in this industry. Um, Opalang, in order for successful digital transformation, um, to be executed in organizations. What do you think, or what's your point of view around the new skills that CMOs and CTOs should be acquiring to ensure more collaboration, less silos within the organization? Firstly, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here and to chat to you and all your listeners. Um, yes, Spain is beautiful and it's a hot summer day today. So. It's, it's great to also be talking about very important information that we all need to know about and share as marketeers. Um, so to, to the question that you asked me, I think, you know, it, we know that CMOs and marketeers are now strategic partners to business and, and we need to also be able to, to align our marketing strategies to the larger business goals and making more data-driven decisions. So yes, CMOs and marketing are a strategic partner to business. And because of this, we need to start aligning our marketing strategies with the larger business goals and making more data-driven decisions and understanding the technology stack in the business and those data points that are linked to our roles is what we need to start really focusing on and ensuring that those you're using the business strategy and objectives and start aligning your marketing objectives and achievements to that is key. Those are the new skills that we really need to start thinking about as um, marketeers, ensuring that we really understand what the business is trying to achieve and how we input into that. And of course, having clear you know, success matrix. So what does success look like to you in line to what the business is doing? And of course, how do you measure that? Why are you measuring that? And when do you measure that? And of course, what are you measuring? So really being data driven in making the right decisions to ensure that you are impacting the business um, in a positive way. Absolutely. And I agree with you. Yes, marketing is really the strategic engine of the organization. Um, I think the challenge now for marketeers, like you said, is now um, in the interplay of data and technology. So are we saying the CMO now is becoming the CTO because now there's this whole play of what are the tools and platforms and tech stack and data that needs to be incorporated to ensure that the strategy is being executed e efficiently? I think it's not that we're becoming the CTO. We all have a role to play, you know, um, but I think it's important that we really start understanding technology that is aligned to our role as a, uh, as a marketing organization. And now the relationship between IT and marketing becomes very important. In the past, we, we really never spoke to IT because you know we were doing our thing, they were doing their thing. But now because of the power that, of technology and the tools that are available to us at Marketeers, that relationship and really needs to turn into a partnership. And Understanding the overall digital or digitization of the um, organization and the digital strategy of an, of an organization is something that we as marketing also need to understand so that we know how what we require from IT, the support that we require from our technology colleagues, um, fits into the bigger scheme of what the business is trying to do on their own digital journey. Okay, and that's a good point. You know, it sounds like now marketeers really need to be upskilling and understanding, you know, how technology plays. So uh, in your own experience, what are the, some of the things or processes or policies or capability programs you've seen or experienced that, you know, you would advise a marketer to follow to be able to, to be ready for or to be able to execute with precision this digital transformation? Yeah, I think... Uh, again, starts with a vision. So what is it that we're trying to achieve, not just as marketing, but as a business? How do you, from a marketing perspective, feed into that and contribute to that? 
and that then leads to having clear objectives and, uh, and KPIs for marketing. So that for me would be number one. Start with what are we trying to achieve? Clear KPIs and understanding what those KPIs mean in regards to what the business is trying to achieve and where the business is trying to go. Then again, like you said, understanding the technology, but not just from a you know, understanding perspective, but also understanding interoperability. So what platforms work with what? And this is, again, where the relationship with technology comes in, with the IT department comes in, because we may not have the visibility about all the, the full, you know, technology stack within the business, but we need them to help us understand what that landscape looks like and how what we require will fit into what they're, they're also planning and what is on the ground. Again, because consolidation is better than trying to diversify. So how do we ensure that whatever we have is is work can work together from a technology perspective, but still give us the, the 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 results that we require or the data points that we require. And of course, um, you know, as marketing people, we 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 like to see things. We we're all about you know touching and feeling and seeing. Ask for a demo. So one thing I always do is understand how this works, how it will work for my team. So the usability of of it all, because really, you know, user adoption becomes a, a big challenge sometimes if you don't factor that in. So as for a demo and understand if really this is what you this technology or this tool is what you think it is. So play around with it. Play around with technology. Technology is actually so much fun. I know people sometimes are a bit scared of technology, but play with the with the tools. And now you know, I feel that tools have and, and technology and MarTech stacks have been made so user friendly. So the usability and the yeah. user interfaces have become so simple because the idea is to ensure that you are using the tools efficiently for you to get um, the maximum output out of them. So that that would be what I would I would guide our, our, our you know, our colleagues listening in to do. Which actually leads to, you know, my next question around, you know, the whole tech stack again. Um, and sometimes perhaps, you know, in from the marketing point of view, uh, a marketer may, may not be fully equipped to evaluate technology that is, you know, potentially being introduced into organization. And on the other side, from the, the technical side, maybe the IT or digital and technology side, perhaps, um, you know, applications or platforms being introduced, do they really meet, you know, what the business needs? So what would you say are the key checklist items that a MarTech evaluation should include? And I like what you said about do a demo. I mean, I think that's a start. What else would you say would be, is, you know, should be in that checklist? Yeah, I think a checklist is, is, is important because you need to really make sure that you're, you know, crossing all your T's and dotting all your I's. Um, so that again, you you get maximum output of what you you're trying to achieve. So, for me, like I said, it, it 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 like I mentioned before. First of all, clear KPIs, clear KPIs on what it is that you're trying to achieve, so that you can again keep on checking yourself to see if you are on track. Understand the user journey. So internal user journey first, as in your own team first understand what that user journey looks like, and then of course, that of your external customers. Then, the as I mentioned before, interoperability, I think that that for me is always gonna be, you know, something I repeat because you're, you're making, you want to make sure that you thoroughly evaluate this, pad, that's this platform, and not just from a marketing execution perspective, but also from an integration um, and a technology orchestration perspective. Um, so those are the things that I would definitely look at. And of course, data security. Security becomes so important for us as marketeers because we we really handle a lot of data, of customer data. And um, it is our responsibility to ensure that we're protecting that data in the right ways. Um, so understanding the data policies that you have within the organization and ensuring that the technology that you're evaluating or thinking about um, adopting fits into those security policies. So those to me are the are, are the main things that you look to you need to look at. Um, of course, with the support of your technology team in them helping you really understand what's out there in the market. So 
that you have a bit of choice and you have an opportunity to, to, to compare. So take time to compare your vendors and take time to compare the tools because there are a lot of them out there. So really it's about what you want to achieve, how you want to achieve it in a way that's easy and efficient for you and your team to use so that you get to your, your end goal. And, and speaking of data security in this, you know, whole age of data privacy, if we talk about governance now, um, what is the role of the CMO and the CTO in terms of collaboration to ensure, you know, end to end data protection for the consumer, for the organization? And, you know, so basically what, what is the role of the CMO and, and the CTO? I mean, like you said, you know, security, is is key and it's not just about um the data that we handle as an uh, as a marketing organization but it's about that data and how it gets used throughout the organization and as i as we started off saying that you want to use data to help you make the right decisions um to help the organization grow so the responsibility really is for both Parties. Actually, it's not just even for marketing and technology only, it's for the entire organization to understand. Yeah. So having a clear understanding of which data to collect is important. You do not want to just have loads and loads of data for nothing. The data needs to be relevant, needs to be current, needs to be, needs to be um, in a format that you can easily adapt or ad you adopt and use. And that conversation with the CTO really needs to come in about what policies we have in place. As an organization, we, you should have a data security policy. And that starts from first, how you're collecting that data, right up to when you're how you're using it, when you're using it, and when you let that data go, and who gets visibility of that data. So it's it's an it's a it's a partnership that the CMO and the CTO need to engage in to ensure that they're protecting the organization and of course the reputation of the organization and the relationship between the organization and the end customer. So for me, data security is, a, is an organizational responsibility. It's not just on the CTO or the CMO, but we are the, definitely the beneficiaries of good data management and ensuring that we're respecting that data and using it in a way that's appropriate for us and of course for the end customer. And in your experience, what would you say is uh, what, from a consumer's point of view, what would a good data privacy policy look like for a consumer? Uh, if we put, if we're saying, you know, we keep saying we want to put the consumer first. What does that, you know, picture of success look like for the consumer? So for the consumer, my view would be, firstly, communicate what you're using that data for. So as a, an end consumer, they should always be looking for, what are you going to use my data for? Number one, no, that's number one. So what are you using it for? Number two, then because then you can gauge if you're giving unnecessary data or way too much data than is needed for the purpose. And second, secondly, when and when are you going to use that data? So how long are you going to have my data sitting in your in your environment? So what is it doing there? How long is it sitting there? And then thirdly, who else has visibility to my data? So as an as an end consumer, that's why we usually ask. You know, we we well, we need to inform them who and what we're going to use that data for. So you always want to know what type of data, who's going to have visibility to it. When are you likely to use it? And that will also determine for how long you need to have it for. And how do you dispose of my data? So once you're done and I've given you permission to use my data for this purpose that we have discussed and agreed upon, what then? Is it sitting there for another three years so you can just keep on using it? Or are you? is it done? So those are the consensual um agreements that we need to have with our end customers and we need to also educate our end customers on why we are asking all of these things and why they should be asking us you know as those people that really engage with them on a day-to-day -day basis um of how we're treating that data because as you know we say you know data is king now um because there's so much that we can glean from the data that we have available to us from various sources that we need to respect the fact that that is, um, you know, it's gold. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I'm one of those people who, when I'm being asked for data or information from an organization, a brand, I'm always suspect. I'm like, why yeah. do you need all this information? Do you really need all this information? <laughs> like, maybe I'm just a paranoid one, but I, I know you're not. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's important. You know, thinking about, you know, the different tech stacks that organizations need to really uh, digitize their businesses or transform their businesses. Um, where do you think, how ready do you think we are in Africa in terms of um, tech solutions from Africa by Africans for Africa? Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, of course an African first, you know, and the South African second. Um, and I believe we are ready. Uh, you, you in East Africa should know, we are very ready from a digital um, you know, perspective and a digital understanding and adoption perspective. Um, where I do think we we need to do more is sharing and scaling those skills. So there are lots of, like I said, there are lots of applications, lots of tools that are out there. The question is, do those tools do, first of all, what they need to do? And do people know about those tools? So it's almost marketing our own tools, you know? So we, we create and develop a lot of amazing technology from an African perspective. We, we always kind of lean to the big brands because that's what we know. That's what we know the, the most of large organizations are using. But we also need to give an, an opportunity for these small small developers to showcase their, their applications in our environments. But we also need to help them be able to you know, spread their awareness and get and gain awareness for that. So that's why I also believe in, in, in demos and POCs. Try stuff out. Try whatever is out there out. Test it against each, the other and compare. There's so much out there that you have as a marketer the opportunity to compare and choose the right technology for yourself. And when, again, the security thing is always where, what, you know, where I feel we can improve where we fall short. We do not always take into consideration how that application from a security perspective stacks up. And because of what we've just discussed in regards to data being gold, we need to up our game in that. I think that's one place where we, there, may, there must be a bit of improvement. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm like you, I'm also you know, very optimistic about the, the marketplace in Africa. I think we need to be scaling, as you said, um, platforms that gener come out from Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Ghana should be, mm -hmm. you know, we should be hearing about it and applying and trying and demoing, like you're saying, um, at scale, because that's the only way we'll be able to grow the next generation of, you know, you know, entrepreneurs, especially so because, um, which leads into my next question, you know, again, back to the Africa, you know, market, um, where I think the stats are over 60% of Africans are under the age of 30, which is, you know, unlike any other continent in the world. Yeah. So what, what, what would your advice be for a young marketer or even an experienced marketer, um, you know, in this now new journey where marketers now are not, the, the generalist role has now become, you need to, you know, have specialist skills from a career or development point of view, what advice would you give a marketer to really leverage digital to, to explore their career? <clears throat> I think, again, don't be scared of technology. Um, you know, I think most people um, say that louder. <laughs> <laughs> don't be scared, <laughs> because um, I think that's where you know the 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 user adoption um, and is is mostly the challenge. The technology is there, so as marketing um, professionals, I think it's important to lean in onto an, into understanding that technology is there to make you more efficient at your role, and. Again, technology can be used to really help, well, if you use it the right way, the data that you can glean using technology can help you become more successful in your role and drive bigger and, and more positive impact in the organization. So please apply for and go for those short training courses, those digital training courses. Yes, it may have nothing to do with marketing, but go for that AI course. Go for that blockchain course, because then you start firstly being open 
to technology and what technology can do for you in your environment, but also you start understanding how you can use it in your specific role or and in your organization. So don't be scared to go and apply for an a course or you know a workshop uh, or something that's got nothing to do with marketing. Um, I was lucky in my career that I first you know had, had some market some technology qualifications. Then I went into the marketing um, you know industry, so I got a marketing qualification and and so on. So I understood the technology first, then joined marketing. So for me, it kind of came naturally because. I could now understand the technology and be able to translate in that into more business or lame man, you know, speak. But it's it's not that scary. It's actually part of our daily lives now. And especially if you're saying young marketeers, they have technology all around them. They use it every day. I mean, this little device here, you know, is, is like their world. And so much power can be in this little device. So they, they, I'm sure that they are, you know, um, kind of already in that line of not being scared to use technology, but they need to just go for, for more training and just understand what's out there. Yeah, my, my, I, I like quoting Steve Jobs on that when he said, stay hungry, stay curious. Mm -hmm. So we have all these new and emerging technologies like AI, blockchain, machine learning. First of all, which one excites you right now? What what are you excited about and uh, and and why? I think AI because you know um, there's so many phases or ver versions of what you can do with artificial intelligence, um, and also it varies. The use cases vary from industry to industry. So from a marketing perspective, regardless of what industry you're in, that's something I believe you should be a, a fair with. That's something you should know about. Just how artificial intelligence in in many ways, you know, can help you and your organization be more efficient. First of all, we know that there's now things that are, you, you know, you can AI that you can use to put together a whole campaign you know, or at least help you understand what um, your competitors are doing by gathering all that information and putting it in, an, in, an, in a way that makes sense to you. So there's so much that we can do with AI. So for me, that's something that um, excites me. And also from a creative perspective, I know there's a big argument about AI and creatives, you know, um, if, you know, painting by AI is really taking away jobs from our, you know, our, our local artists. And there's a there's a debate to be had there. But I think if you use it the right way for your own objectives and business to get, again, to align to your objectives and what you're trying to, uh, to achieve, there's room for technology. Um, it, and, and AI is one of those for me. I think there's so much. We have not even touched the surface, I believe. Yeah. So is AI going to replace you? Never. So <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you Never. said it with so much conviction. <laughs> I like that. Never, because I th and this is the thing like, with technology. I think we need to re remind ourselves that as individuals, as humans, our cognitive abilities are still quite advanced. Um, so we it will take a while for technology to 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 catch up. It's catching up, yes, but there's still some power to that human instinct instinct and intuition there's nothing that beats face-to-face -face engagements reading the cues the verbal cues the the physical cues from that individual and as and in customer engagements that's what you also need because customers still want to speak to another human being so I don't believe that, you know, that will replace us in, in any ways and again it's how you use the technology it will always enhance what you're doing be able to make you more efficient, you know, and hopefully help you be more accurate in what you do and be able to measure effectively what it is that you're doing. But it, I'm, I, I'm no, not worried about technology replacing anybody. I think we just need to make sure that we are all using it responsibly. Absolutely. Um, and so, and speaking of that, what are some of the risks uh, organizations should be aware of when adopting such technologies, especially when they're in their formative uh, years? Yeah, I think the uh, the risks, if they're in informative years, is definitely um, 
wasting money, of course. You know, I think right now with with the way the economy is going globally, um, organizations are really trying to stay resilient and grow. And because they're trying to do that, they, you know, the they're always looking for ways they can make the budget stretch. Um, and 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 really being aware of what you're taking on board from a technology uh, perspective, doing your research on that um, is important. So you will not just take on technologies to for the fun of it. You need to do your research. You need to understand again how that fits into your bigger digitization journey um, as an organization and how you will be utilizing that specific tool to get what. So the return on that um, technology investment needs to be clear and articulated before you can, in my view, take on new technology. And to your point, test it first, because if it's still in some informative age, you need to test it first. You cannot take the risk of, you know, really disrupting your, your business like that with a technology that you do not know will give you the results and the return that you need. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, taking making sure you have those um, checks and balances to make sure that you're not um, exposing the organization. Yeah. Um. And and speaking of that, you know, you your experience, you know, in marketing has has been with a with large multinationals. Um, what would you say, you know, larger organizations should watch out for when it comes to digital transformation? What are some of the, you know from a culture maybe point of view, or what is it that as much as larger organizations may have the resources or the latitude to adopt um, technologies and data and what have you, but what should, what are the key watch outs you would, you would advise? From my experience, <laughs> it's really been a, about having a clear vision. Um, where I've seen transformation or digital transformation um, projects fail is where there was no clear vision. Um, or there was a vision, but nobody else knew about it, you know? So, <laughs> so having a clear vision. Having, there's a PowerPoint in somebody's computer. You know, so, exactly. <laughs> so having a clear vision that everybody buys into and is aware of how they fit into making that vision a reality. And I think that's just business in general. Um, but that for me has, from my experience, that's been the biggest issue. And then secondly, having a person who leads that project. So having somebody who's the only throat to choke, you know, um, who's project managing that project and leading that project because everybody else usually in when a digital um, you know project comes into play, everybody's got their day-to-day -day roles. They're busy with their day-to-day -day jobs. So they really you need somebody else who's going to be driving and pushing and ensuring that we're meeting the deadlines, ensuring that, the, that everybody's delivering on what they're supposed to deliver, understanding the environment holistically, not in just the little silos, um, but having that bigger picture and vision, um, and you know, aligning to that vision and driving this this project. So those two have always been um, things that I've noticed have kind of you know, kind of tripped us up in the past. And of course, user adopt adoption. So once you've done this great thing, have you put the users on journey? Have you done a good change management program? Um, because nothing will work if it's not being used appropriately by the people who are supposed to use it. So really making sure that you have user adoption and change management programs and, and, and plans in place is important. That, that's very clear. Clear vision, somebody leading the project, and that person really needs to be have that resilience, yeah? Because I'm sure there'll Completely. be a lot of challenges, blockers, they'll be in the dip most of the time, pulling people yeah. out. Um, exactly. And very clear, yeah. really good. So the quick fire question, uh, which industry trend will have the greatest impact in marketing in the next five years? Is it personalization or voice search? Personalization. And I say that because if you personalize everything that we can do, if we can personalize and make it specific to that customer, it will always resonate. So you can have all the fancy tools around it, but if it doesn't resonate with the customer, it means nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for your time. This has been really an interesting conversation. Do you have any final parting thoughts? Um. I guess for me, it's always, you know, 
to remember that in an organization, the CMO is a strategic partner. And because you are a strategic partner, it means that you need to really start engaging with your peers um, you know, around that exco table. So it's a partnership. And the minute that we as, as marketeers can showcase the benefit and the impact that we have on the business, the more of that partnership um, and collaboration, that the more that will grow. And we need to remember with technology, you mustn't get distracted by the shiny new toys. You need to just stay focused on your primary objectives, what you're trying to achieve aligned to the business strategy. That's what I would guide. You couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much, Opalan. I really appreciate this conversation. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun to have a conversation with you and to chat to you. Thank <laughs> you.